Welcome everybody. I hope you brought your appetite. I do have a smorgasbord of information for you today. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot and this is Tuesday. It is March 28th. Now, while I sit here and gab with you about OTC and penny stocks, why don't you make yourself comfortable, serve yourself up a big old heaping of news over here from our news bar we just put in. There is eight days worth of news here, all from the OTC market, all penny stocks. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. And this is all quality news that I've read. Mergers, acquisitions, new technology, stuff like that. So if you haven't got time to look at it now, definitely look at it later. Don't overlook it. Now the stocks we're looking at for potential to make money aren't the hot stocks of the day. I know there's a lot of YouTubers out there that cover the hot stocks. And these stocks have got hundreds, maybe thousands of people watching them through the day. So when they make a video, yeah, they get a ton of views. But I'm doing stocks more under the radar, so I don't get as many views. But I think there's more money on the stocks we're looking at. Those ones that already ran have already done their number and now they're starting to fall. We're looking at stocks that are ready to break out. We're finding warm charts and then we're looking for news to push that chart into the profit zone. Now, when I do my research on these stocks, I do it here at the OTC markets and it really doesn't matter if it's from the OTC or the major exchange. Keep it in mind, a penny stock is any stock under five bucks and they're on every single market. And I search them out here all of them. Now, it's not set up for the major exchange. It is perfect for the OTC. They are updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So don't waste your time going to Google looking for current information. That's all this site is about. And they do bring in a lot of information for the major exchanges. So ultimately, I don't think it's going to hurt you to start your research here, regardless of what stock you're looking at. If you don't find what you're looking for, right, the internet's always there. So let's take a look at how our OTC finished today. Now I have refreshed this once. We may not get anything out of this, but we're going to cross our fingers and hope. Nope, not a thing. All right, our dollar volume seems to have risen from 1.2 billion, I think it was, to 1.5. We still need to be at 2 billion. Share volume, we have dropped. I think it was 6 billion down to 5.9. Not much, but we need to get to 10 billion. So we're going the wrong direction. And our trades, well, let's jump back up over 250,000. We're just going on each side of that right now. There's not a whole lot changing. It really is the same old, same old day after day. With them, not me. No, every day with me is a new <laughs> adventure. And speaking of adventure, let me take you on a journey right now and show you the three stocks that I came up with. First stock we're taking a look at comes from the major exchanges, the New York Stock Exchange. This is ticker CZOO, Kazoo Group. Now her chart is not by any means a breakout chart. It has been a bit of a mess here recently. She went through a reverse split back at the beginning of February, a one in 20, and it really kicked the price up. And like most reverse splits, she fell afterwards. Well, we looked at this stock back at the end of July, August of last year. She had this huge run. And like I like to do, I drew a line at the bottom of the surge and the top of the surge. Well, she has fallen right back down to the very top of that surge and has started consolidating. And looks like she needs a reason to run. And I think I found that reason. It's all in the revenues. Their revenues have been growing tremendously, and it's time for their next financial right now. So CZOO, she finished today at $2.08 and almost 10% up today. So what does Kazoo do? Well, this is an online car dealership for the United Kingdom and most of Europe. And they do everything. They've got a site up here. You can buy your cars here, sell your cars finance them. They'll pick them up. They'll deliver them within 72 hours if you need be. And they've been doing booming business. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ooh, not real good. She dropped about 50%, didn't she? Normally doing 357,000 shares a day. Today she dropped down to 155,000. Hmm, maybe the calm before the storm? Share structure for Kazoo. All right, the only thing they give us here is $752 million for the outstanding. We can't get the float in the financial, so we have no choice but to go over to Google. Now, Google gives me a variety of numbers here, so I really don't have a clue. I can only guess. We got $469 million, $23 million, 
23 million, 19 million, and would you believe 27,000? That's what that K means, thousand. Well, you know, normally I would go with the one that had the most agreement, which is 23, but considering that our outstanding share count is 752, I'm gonna presume that the float is 469 million, but you can presume anything you like. Looking at the financials for the company, this is where the story gets bright. All right, we got three years worth of financials here. These are annuals. Remember, we got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers here. 2019, they did $1.5 million. One year later, they did $221 million worth of business. A year later, they did just under a billion dollars worth of revenue at 904,000. Now, quarterly, they don't give us any information whatsoever. The only thing we get is a wee bit of a peekaboo by reading a news press that came out at the beginning of March, I believe it was. They tell us that January and February, GPU tracking is 900 pounds up from 600 pounds during Q4 2022. Now, I'm going to be honest. I do not know what GPU is. I thought it was gross purchase unit or something like that. I went to look it up. I could not find it. It is a United Kingdom expression and I just couldn't focus in on it. But what we can focus in on is that $900, 900 pounds, it doesn't matter. The bottom line here is, is that's 50% increase from 600. They've had a 50% increase over the last two months. And they tell us down here that the fact that we have now sold well over 100,000 cars entirely online in the UK in the three years since launch demonstrates the continued consumer shift online. Now, they do have a disclosure here we need to take a look at. These right here, these 13 Ds and 13 Gs, these are new investors. And I got one I want to show you here because I want to blow your mind a little bit. This came out on the 24th of this month. This is a statement of beneficiary ownership. It means that they had someone come in, buy enough shares, so many that they actually become part owner and they get a percentage of the company. And in these filings, you're gonna get some very basic information right in these 14 lines here. Their name, how many shares they bought, and the percentage of ownership. And you can have many of these in one form. Matter of fact, this one has a lot. We're not gonna go through it all, but watch this. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are all new investors buying into the company. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Bottom line, you have 47 new investors right here from March 21st until yesterday. 47 new investors. That's impressive. Now let's take a look at that news. Taking a look at just the most current news we got here. We're going back to February. They had two sales of some of their assets. Kazoo agrees sale of German subscription business. And then Kazoo sells Kazana data platform. We've already looked at this news press. This was their performance update about January and February. And right there is our catalyst news. They tell us here that the company is gonna release their full year and fourth quarter 2022 results before market on March 30th. Tomorrow's the last day you can get in before that happens, folks. And I'm expecting a big financial report. I'm thinking this is going to run. That's just my feeling. What do you think? Well, you're not sure, are you? Ah, you need to see the chart. Let's go take a look at that. Let's take a look at ticker CZOO on my free trading platform. This is Thinkorswim. You get it free from TD Ameritrade. Now, of course, we're going to start off here with our six-month, four-hour view. We looked at this back in August, August 2nd. She had a nice run here. I put in my supports and resistances. From this point, she has been falling all the way until that one in 20 reverse split at the beginning of February. 
jumping from 19 cents up to $3.98. And then like most reverse splits, she fell and she fell hard all the way back down to just under two bucks, $1.98. And she is right on top of that support like it was meant to be. And she doesn't look like she wants to come under it. She has been consolidating there for quite a while. And right now we are on top of the nine day SMA just underneath the 50. Our problem is we don't have any volume. There's nothing going on here. All of our oscillators are flat. The only thing climbing, and this is good, is our RSI. She is up at 54. We would like to see her a minimum of 55. 20 day, one hour view. What the heck? Look at that 200 day SMA. There's an angle in it, a point. I rarely ever see a point on a 200 day SMA. They're always curves. Wow. So we had a huge jump on this day. What day was that? That was March 10th. Well, they had that update about January, February on the 7th, but there was nothing until that last piece of news. So why she decided to jump on the 10th, I don't know, but she did a good one going from about $1.95 up to $3.14. Then she fell all the way down to that support line, hit a low bubble, bounced off of that and is negotiating with the 50. And look, folks, she's getting ready to break out right now. She's on top of her 50, pushing up without any slowing down, looking like she has a plan. Our oscillators are looking much better now. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, has had a crossover and pushing up. Just like our MACD, these two are kin to each other. You read them the same. MACD uses the full price. The percentage price oscillator uses a percentage of the price. And now our RSI is up to 60. Taking a look at that five day, five minute. So she's bounced off of that support, got on top of her 200, has slipped underneath, but now has come back up. And even after market hours, she is pushing up strong. All of our oscillators are in our favor right now. Not only is our PPO and our MACD pushing up, but this is my ADX trend continuation. I like to put my ADX underneath my PPO because I look for a particular pattern to let me know when the stock is falling or climbing. Whenever you see that blue line going up and the red line going down, guaranteed, guaranteed the price is going up. If they are coming together, guaranteed the price is falling. So I really do like to use these. As I said, our MACD is already at a crossover and pushing up, and now our RSI is up to 62 and everything is looking good. This is a prime setup, folks. She is looking hot, and I think once this filing comes out, chances are it's gonna be bigger than all the rest of them, and there's going to be a jump, especially after that fall. She settled after the reverse split, right? So people have found a value that they're comfortable with. Here is where she should start growing. Our next stock here, curiously enough, is a mining company, but I didn't pick it. I found it, right? I'm looking at charts that have potential. I'm not looking at the name of the company. I have no clue what sector they're in. And if I find a chart that has heat and I can find a catalyst to light that chart, I really don't care what sector it's in. STRRF, Satori Resources. She has been climbing the chart since the beginning of the year, January. Now she isn't making any money, but she is a mining company dealing with gold. And all through the back half of 2022, they were doing tests on this Tartan Lake gold mine project and they were finding lots of gold. Then they came out with the news press in February. They had someone come in and buy 40% of the company. Now that's a big deal, but it's not just about how much, it's who. And I'm gonna share that with you here in just a second. So ticker STRRF, Satori Resources, she finished the day at about 16 and a half cents, just a little bit over 8% gains. On the middle tier of the OTC, we call this the better tier, the QB. It's better because you have to audit your financials to be here. Now I'm always telling you to look for green ticks. That's all of them. That's every green tick you could look for, so she looks great. Now, their mines are based out of Toronto. They are in mineral exploration and development. And as I said, their primary property is the past producing Tartan Lake Gold Mine Project located in the prolific Flin Flon Greenstone Belt of Manitoba. Imagine living at Flin Flon. So what was the relative volume around the company today? <sighs> Another company that's dropped about well, I was going to say 50%, but that's closer to 65%, dropping from almost 100,000 shares a day down to 44,000 shares. 
share structure for the company. Well, would you believe the numbers were right here? 99.3 million is the outstanding share count. The float is 84.7. Not a great float, but it's not bad. Financials for the company, well, as I said, they're not making any money whatsoever. Not a penny, not yet. The news. Now, as I said, the news at the back half of 2022 was all about their testing of Tartan Lake Gold Mine Project. They were doing all of this drilling and they were reporting on the results. Then they had a piece of news that came out here February 6th. Rob McEwen to acquire 37.6% of Satori Resources focused on growing high-grade gold discovery at Tartan Lake Mine and new projects surrounding Canada's largest mines and development projects. Rob McEwen will become Satori's largest shareholder, owning almost 40% of the company. Satori is proposing to acquire Rob Ewan's 100% owned private exploration company, Apollo Exploration, that has been acquiring key exploration projects around Canada's largest gold mines. So what you've really got here is like a merger. You've got Rob McEwen bringing in all that he owns into this company and this company joining with him. And he now owns about 40% of it. And they tell us after this, quote unquote deal, they are going to be changing the name and the ticker of the company. They're going to have $2.2 million in cash with no debt. And then they give us a lot of plans of what they're going to do with all these various properties. Now, Rob McEwen, why is he involved? Well, he says high grade gold intercepts have always caught my attention. And here there are many. So who is Rob McEwen? Well, they tell us here that Rob is chairman and chief owner of McEwen Mining, which has three producing mines in Nevada, Ontario, and Argentina, and holds 68% interest in the large Los Azus copper project in Argentina. Rob has been associated with the gold industry all his career, his first 18 years in the investment industry, and since 1990 as CEO of several gold mining companies. Now, check this stuff out. Rob is the founder of Gold Core, where he took the company from a market cap of $50 million to over $8 billion. He owns 17% of McEwen Mining, 15% of McEwen Copper, and takes a salary of $1 a year. How about that, folks? He doesn't even take money out. He just takes profits from the gold. Rob and his wife, Cheryl, have donated over $60 million to encourage excellence and innovation in healthcare and education. You gotta like that. And Rob has been awarded the Order of Canada in 2007, the Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee Award in 2013, and was inducted into the Mining Hall of Fame in 2017. And then you've got more credentials down here. In other words, the man is accomplished and he sees the value in this company, brought his whole company into it, bought 40% of it, and they haven't made a dime yet. How much gold do you think is in the ground? How much do you think this is going to be worth if he's willing to jump in now at 40% ownership? I think it's worth considering. Let's go take a look at that chart. Would you believe that that is a six-month, four-hour view? Sweet chart, isn't it? This is STRRF. We got a low bubble here at the end of December of 2.3 cents, and she was falling all this time at the back half of 2022, even with all that good news about finding all that gold. It wasn't until January 11th. Yeah, we got like 12 days missing here. What's up? 12 days of Christmas? January 11th, she comes back into the picture and has a change of heart. She ain't hanging around here no more. She is off and running, and she has been climbing ever since then. Now, she has had some pullbacks here and there, but there is no doubt about it. She is on an uptrend. You can see our 50-day SMA is smooth. She's on top of her nine-day right now. Actually hit a high at the very end of the day of almost 18 cents. And she did this despite the declining volume. Now, our oscillators are looking good. All of them are on fire right now. The RSI is at 74. Both the MACD and the PPO are curving up. Everything looks really good on the four hour. That 20 day, one hour view. 
So she was going sideways the hard way here until she got good footing right here on the 20 day and she did a jump up onto the 50 and did not look back, got on top of that nine and she has been floating to the moon ever since then. Technical say she's cooling off just a wee bit right now. Well, I see we've got a high bubble here at the very end of the day and it looks like a pullback. I'll bet you that's what we've got. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Yeah, there you go. And this is natural. When you hit your head on the ceiling, it's just instinct to pull your head down and look up. And that's what you got here. Pulled their head down and they're looking up. And right now it's bouncing on that 20 day SMA, which it has not come really any deeper. Most of the time it's on the nine, checking in on the 20 and then continuing on her way. Our technicals, they say she still has some downdraft right now, so we need to keep an eye on her. Now, the strange thing about this is, folks, there is no catalyst. There really isn't. She was running before she had news, started in January. The news came out in February, and she's still running now in March with no more news. <laughs> so, they, they come out with a financial. It really isn't going to help because I don't expect there to be any money on it. I mean, if there is, that's going to be exciting. So I don't know what sort of catalyst could come out right now, but the fact is she has been steady climbing for the last three months and just isn't slowing down. You might want to keep your eye on her. No doubt in my mind, all of you are familiar with this company. This is Sober Safe Inc., ticker SOBR. Now, this company has had a lot of activity over the last six months. Matter of fact, we looked at this back in October, back when things were just getting going, and we looked at it at a good time. She had a solid run after we looked at it. Then she had a horrible, huge fall, bowled back up over that 200, and is now back to that uptrend. She has had news since we looked at it, and she's had current news, and they're all about deals that they're making, and all these deals are going to start bringing in revenues, and that's my concern. She has some revenues on the books, single digit, so she needs more. I think this is the catalyst we're looking for. So SOBR, she finished today at $2.36 with just a little over 2.5% gains, and in case I failed to mention it, this is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. Now, for those of you who don't know what SoberSafe does, they have a technology. They've created these detection devices that can find alcohol in our systems without breathalyzers. I mean, they are smelling. <laughs> They're sniffing the vapor of your skin. They've got two devices, one that looks like a mouse. This is being sold to corporations, companies, businesses, employers who want to make sure their employees are sober. Whether you're taking care of kids, stocking shelves, or flying an airplane, all employers want their employees sober. So this, I think, is going to be a hot item. So this mouse item, when you come in in the morning, you're going to put your two fingers on it. The first one has your fingerprint. That IDs you. The second finger is the one they're sniffing. <laughs> Any alcohol in there. That information is sent to the cloud where it's analyzed and sent back. Then they have the one that looks like a watch. Now this is used more for like a penal system for people getting out of prison, going on probation or something. It does detect alcohol, but it sends this information somewhere else. It also has a GPS on it so that they know where you are, though somebody else is, and it has a tamper proof on it. So if you try to take it off, those somebody else's get an alarm. So they've got that product as well. But the one that looks like a mouse, that's the one that is getting all the attention right now. So what was the relative volume around this company today? What is it? It's like almost 50% drop on this one too. We dropped from almost 700,000 shares to just over 350,000 shares. He gets. Share structure for sober. All right. This is curious. I watched the video I put out in October, and back then I said that the float was six million. Well, something has happened because now when I go searching, the closest I can get is really 10 million. Not that I'm complaining, 10 million is an excellent float. That is a low float. Financials for the company, well, as I said, they're in single digits, not on the annuals. They just started making money uh, about two quarters ago. How much? Not very much. We got $1,000 in June's quarter and $9,000 in September's quarter. And we are waiting for this one to come out right now. And I'm expecting it to be much bigger than this. How big, I don't know. But I can give you a feel for what it's going to be. 
by looking at the news, you can see they have been making deals. They've got these deals going on and every deal is gonna bring them money. So what I wanna do here is I wanna jump into this one right here and show you the kind of money that they could be making. Sober Safe Science International Trucking School, numerous locations targeted for expansion. Customer parent company owns trucking, labor, mining, oil and gas, and aeronautics assets. The company has signed an agreement with the Fox Group based in British Columbia, Canada with operations in the United States. The Fox Group is a leader in North America commercial driver education and they got quite a few schools here. They are targeting the entire training organization of 3,500 employees, all student drivers for sober check expansion. But that's not all. The Fox Group also owns four trucking companies with more than 4,000 aggregate employees, as well as commercial driving labor agency, mining and oil gas safety distributorships, and a flight simulation company servicing major airlines. The Fox Group is further evaluating SoberSafe's technology for uniform installation across all portfolio holdings for recommendation to significant customers. Now, where does the money come in? they're charging $30 per person that uses that mouse. Every single person that uses it, you gotta pay $30 a month. Well, when you got 3,500 people there, what's that come out to? Uh, $105,000 a month. When you got 4,000 people, that's $120,000 a month. And that's just for these two. They've got lots of other groups that they're involved with. Now stop, multiply. How many corporations, businesses, companies are going to want to make sure their employees are sober? Hundreds, thousands of them. So if they get a million customers at $30 a month, that's $30 million a month just for a million customers. What happens if they get 10 million customers? Woohoo! Now we're talking, right? Let's go take a look at that chart. Onward and upward. This is sober. Dicker SOBR six month, four hour chart. And as I said, we have been here before. This blue line indicates when. That is October 10th. It was about $2.60 when we found it, and she ran to $4.27 by the end of October. Then she took a huge, horrible fall, fell all the way down here to 65 cents at the end of December. Got up across that 200, worked it all out, and she is now back on her uptrend. Right now, she is over 200, over her 50, and she is negotiating with her nine. Everything looks good, except we don't have any volume. And our technicals, though they're warm, they look like they're all cooling off right now. 20-day, one-hour view. So she was way too low here, and she knew it. Threw herself back up here to the 200 and has been hanging out up there. Right here, she has started her climb, hit a high of 253, came back to her 20-day SMA, and has broken through that and is on her 50. Looking at the oscillators, they're pushing down. Says she probably wants to attempt touching that 200, but our 200 is pushing up just like our 50. So she should bounce off of that if she comes that low. Looking at that five-day, five-minute. Well, that's better. She had a low down here of $1.91, got on top of her 200, and has stayed up there. We hit a high of 253. She fell back to her 200, has pushed away, come back, and she is broken it here after market hours, but she's done that before. She normally bounces up, but we're going to have to keep an eye on her because the technicals say she is still pushing down right now. Now, folks, there's more DD to do on Sober. I did not cover everything. I know they're working with a couple of companies, BGM and Helm, I believe it is. These are two corporations that work with big car companies. They do want to get this into cars, and I expect that to happen soon. But they're making deals with all sorts of businesses. And once they hit a million customers, that's $30 million a month. Oh my God. So I really like sober folks. Just do some more DD on her, will ya? You may have noticed a trend here with our catalysts. A lot of them are about financials. Tis the season, folks. Comes every three months. So we got kazoo and we got sober. Both should have impressive financials and get the charts moving. Now, STRRF, on the other hand, uh, no. 
I mean, if she does come out with a financial showing revenues, yeah, that's going to run. But I'm not expecting any revenues, and I really don't see a catalyst. But any kind of news could keep it running. She's been running for three months straight, so who knows? Remember, folks, do your DD on these stocks. I only cover some. There's always more. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.